recorded. Okay, Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Ajnana Tamirandasya, Jnananjana Shalakya, Chakshur Militam Yena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam, Stapitam Yena, Bhutale, Swayam Rupagadha Magyam, Dadati Swapadantikam, Vande Shri Guru, Shri Tapatakamalam, Shri Guru, Vishnamam, Shri Rupam, Sagra Chhatam, Sahagana Raghunathan, Vitam Tam, Shachivam, Sajvaitam, Sabadotam, Parijana Saitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Dada Krishna Padan, Sahagana Dalita, Shri Vishakan, Vitam, Shri Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu, Jagatpade, Gopesha, Gopika, Kanta, Radha, Kanta, Sapta Kanchana Gauranti, Radhi Vrinda, Vinishwari, Vishabhanu, Suti Devi, Prana Mami Hari Priya, Vancha Galpata Rupesh, Kripa Sindhu, Vecha Paritana, Pavane Vyo, Vaishna Vibhyo Namo, Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nitya, Ananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Shiva Sadi Gauravakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Bhakti Shastri Chaut chapter we are getting into Karma Yoga. So Karma Yoga is where we Krishna wants to bring in that Nishkama Karma Yoga from Sakama Karma Yoga to Nishkama Karma Yoga to finally in terms of uh, giving that uh, the results of Karma, results of the Karma to Krishna. This is more from a uh, karma in Krishna conscious. So that is where Krishna Prabhupada is heading to and then we are focusing only on the, the Karma Yoga portion of um, performing, sacrifice, performing sacrifices, yajnas and dhanas and performing uh, natural activities and uh, offering the services, offering the results of it. So that is what is uh, clearly defined. So in the second chapter, what, did, what was the conclusion? You have to perform Karma Yoga with Buddhi. So that is what is called as Buddhi Yoga. right? Karma with knowledge. And then finally, uh, Krishna is, is making it that very clear that you have to perform this duty without any kind of an attachment, offer the results to Krishna. So that is what is conclusion. So now Arjuna in the third chapter is getting confused between Sanyasa Yoga and this one. So Sanyasa Yoga is what? Sanyasa, sanyasa means what? You just leave everything, don't do anything, you just go back, go sit in the forest and do some tapasya. Right? So he understood in that way that, you know, I don't have to do anything, I just have to give up everything. So no, not giving up is... Giving up is not that, no, I will not do any action. Right? So, Arjuna is in that state of mind. That is where Krishna starts answering that question. So, very be very clear what is the preempt or what is the need for Arjuna asking that question and then Krishna is answering. So, in that, the um, Arjuna is asking, why do you urge me in this in this, in this water? We think intelligence is better than fruity work. So, fruity work, we know. Like, if somebody is trying to be working um, for their own sense gratification, then that is more from a uh, personal, personally. So that is where. So performance duty with intelligence is what Krishna is recommending. So what um, uh, what Krishna answer is, no, 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 I think you are getting completely wrong. It is not that you have to leave everything and then you just go and then uh, uh, be in the forest or become a sannyasi. No. Na karma na mana arambam naish karmiyam purushno shute. Okay. Na such and sannyasa na siddhim samadhi gachiti. So you cannot, I mean, not just by abstaining from work. You will just say, okay, I will not perform any work. I'll just be simply uh, not do my prescribed duties. Okay. Then I'll be free. Like now generally, whenever whenever there is an action, what is uh, what is the output is? There will be, there'll be a definite reaction, right? So that reaction can be either positive or negative. So Arjuna is trying to say that, oh, if I don't perform act itself, itself, action itself, then that is more than enough, right? So I will not do anything. So let me be good. So there is a difference between Falgu Vairagya and actual Vairagya. Falgu Vairagya is something, something like, oh, if I touch this, if I don't do this, then I will get uh, better. If I don't, if I do this, I'll get attachment. Let me not do it. No, that is all kind of Falgu or false denunciation. Okay. Uh, that is called as Markata Vairagya. So, Prabhupada also makes it very clear that uh, false renunciation is not uh, recommended and definitely we are we are not recommending for a, that kind of recommendation I and mean, renunciation. So, uh, uh, just just by uh, just by giving up everything alone, one cannot become perfect. Okay, so that is what is we saw yesterday. I mean, the last class, and I think we saw this one also. I think we should we should start with fifth sloka, and where where Krishna is making it very clear. It is not that action, you cannot escape from action. You cannot simply say, oh, I won't work. There is no choice that, you know, that I will not work. You cannot simply say, I will not work. And also, he is making it very nicely, making it very clear that, you know, every, uh, every Jeevatma, 
uh, every jivatma the nature or, or you know the characteristics or the properties of the jivatma is to be active okay it cannot be simply idle it cannot be simply in a state of dormant state or nothing right so that is why this sloka is very nice nahi kashchi shanam api jadu tishtadya karma tat karyate hevasya karma sarva prakriti janai jair gunai not even for a single moment nahi kashchi shanam api shanam api means even for a single moment it cannot a karma krit it cannot be simply say okay so that jivatma will be performing through the mind some activities of thinking about it feeling about it or desiring about it or some kind of an action based on the karma indriyas and gnana indriyas it will it will keep on doing okay? even if somebody simply sits in one particular uh, location also his mind and thought will be completely engrossed in something so there is nothing called like oh i am just idle i am just uh, no right so that is what uh, and he making it very clear what is it karyate havisik karma sarva prakriti janair gunahi which means helplessly helplessly means there is no other way so in a way where because the jivatma is bounded because the jivatma is binded by the the three gunas the material modes of nature helplessly it has to act so in a way where the desire of the jivatma is to come to this material world lord over this material world fulfill all its wishes fulfill its all its desires sense gratification etc so for that the the design or the natural design is you have to act so you are either act for your own self or you act for the lord then you come out okay either you think for yourself you desire for yourself you work for yourself you hard earn money and then you sense gratification or that is normal karma or you do in this way as prescribed to is and then you come out of it either way you have to work there is nothing called i will abstain from my swadharma okay so that is where we start then today we will continue with the other uh, shlokas quickly okay now oh, prabhu ji i have a doubt uh, yes in this shloka 3.5 uh, it, it says akarma so it it defines akarma as without doing uh, something without so, doing Yeah. So elsewhere, I have also, uh, you know, there is a Sanskrit that... word. Yeah, I understand. A karma krit, a karma is different. Okay. So we we have to read it as a karma krit. Okay, Prabhu. Okay. Thank you. So that is where there is a slight Sanskrit uh, Sanskrit way of reading it. So uh, that is why it is called as a karma krit, not uh, this one. So anyway, one way of seeing it is uh, a karma krit here. Also, another way of understanding is. uh without doing something more from a uh, sense gratification or more from a normal karma perspective so in one way akarma is like is the same as karma only difference is there is no uh, there is no uh, bondage or there is no attachment to that result of the karma that's all okay that is why it is called karma a karma that's all so it is not a question of embodied uh, kind of embodied but it is the nature of the soul to be active okay without the presence of spirit the material body cannot move the body is only a dead vehicle so but most importantly the the point is he is making it very clear therefore sanyasa or purifier process is to help train and ultimate goal of life without which everything is considered a failure so whatever be it the purification process is go through the shastras understand the prescribed duties and then become krishna conscious so that's what krishna is also recommending to arjuna even propadi is also making in, in general that for all the devotees or whomsoever we need to follow in that way okay so that is what this 115 15 17 is also nice sloka vetetva so dharmam charana bhujam prayer bhajo napo so yatra ko so this last line ko varta apto bhajatam swadharma bhajatam swadharma which means swadharma is to ensure for ensure bhajatam ensure service to the supreme lord okay let's skip so this center chapter will talk about karma and how what why all the specific uh, action i mean uh, you say the answers are getting reached so we'll get it okay. yeah yeah somebody can read the shloka in translation karmendriyani samyamya ya aste manasa smaran indriyarthan vimudatma मिथ्यचारा सा उच्यते 
certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender. There are many pretenders who refuse to work in Krishna consciousness but make a show of meditation while actually dwelling within the mind upon sense enjoyment. Such pretenders may also speak on dry philosophy in order to bluff sophisticated followers. But according to this verse, they are the greatest cheaters. For sense enjoyment, one can act in any capacity of the social order. But if one follows the rules and regulations of his particular status, he can make gradual progress in purifying his existence. But he who makes a show of being a yogi while actually searching for the objects of sense gratification must be called the greatest cheater, even though he sometimes sp uh, speaks of philosophy. His knowledge has no value because the effects of such a sinful man's knowledge are taken away by the illusory energy of the Lord. Such a pretender's mind is always impure and therefore his show of yogic meditation has no value whatsoever. Hare Krishna. So, thank you, Prabhu. So, this is very nicely mentioned. So, previous loka, Nahi Kastit Shanamap, which means he cannot be idle. What Prabhupada is, Krishna is making, he cannot be idle in the mind also, which means he will say, oh, I'm not doing anything. Okay, let me be sit and this one. But what is happening? His mind is completely dwelling on which means that is called Mithya Charaha. Okay, that is more worse than actually performing activity, right? So there are many pretenders who work, who refuse to work, like you know, oh, I will not touch that, I will not do that, and then uh, this one. So um, this this uh, I think there is a nice story also, right? So every actually Bhagavad Gita, most of the seven hundred slokas, we have around five hundred, six hundred stories also. I just try to see if I can tell the stories also. So this one, uh, uh, I don't know whether you know the story. There were some uh, some disciples of a of a guru, and they were. Um, and they were trying to cross a particular river. Okay, so there are Vishnu disciples, Junior disciples, all kind of disciples, and then uh, they were they were about to cross a road, and they, they saw one lady. Okay, uh, kind of beautiful lady, young lady, whatever we want to convey. So that that lady was trying to was trying to cross, but she was kind of very hesitant. She was like kind of um, uh, very uh, kind of fearful and afraid what to do and all. So these disciples were there and then uh, they were they were also about to cross that particular uh, river and then that lady requested, can somebody help me to cross the river? But all these uh, the, the junior disciples all said, no, no, we are all uh, brahmacharis, we will not do that. So again, this is just a story point, but more, most importantly, the message has to be understood. So what happened? One senior person said, no, no, no problem, I will carry you. So he just takes one basket or he just holds her, whatever be it, okay? He just puts... Uh, keeps her in a basket and he carries her all along the uh, the, the river and then she she she, she then departs then the other disciples are becoming very kind of very uh, uh, shocked and surprised how can you touch a lady how can you take a beautiful lady with you you are a brahmachari you are you have to perform brahmachari you know? so and then but this fellow said no 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 that's okay i'm just performing somebody asked me in help i'm just doing so that's it so he left so all these brahmacharis went back to the uh, to the ashrama and they were among discuss among themselves that's all kind of murmuring happening so the the, the guru got little uh, confused and then asked what is happening what happened and then the the, the, the junior disciple he, he he narrated the entire episode so finally what that guru ji said see that fellow a senior person or whomsoever he just dropped her uh, in that particular ocean and that is it but still you are carrying her in your mind okay so that's the word he used so, which means what? The thing would have happened some time ago and then whatever be it. But still carrying that in our mind is the worst part. So, this gives a very important message that, you know, sometimes we have quarrels, sometimes we have issues, sometimes we follow certain things. The more important thing is performing that action, leaving it, forgetting this one. But still, if you are uh, trying to carry it in your mind, that will actually uh, spoil our all our thoughts, our feelings, our uh, intelligence, everything. So, that's what the, the Guruji said. The, the 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 spiritual master said, "See that fellow, whomsoever did is just a just an action. And that's all. That is over. But uh, after so many uh, hours, also still you are carrying her in your mind, which means that is still in their uh, mind and thought and everything. So again, this is where one way it is very important that how do you understand the uh, the sense, the you know the sense of action, which is like kind of very very." Uh, very very powerful. We might think, oh, this I can I can control. I can do this. But mind is also super powerful. It will just try to ensure that that is being getter. This one. Okay. So let's go. Clear. Let's go to the next slide. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yastra indriyani manasa. 
niyam yarabate arjuna karma karmindriyaye karma yogam asakta sa isisyate papata. On the other hand, if a sincere person tries to control the active senses by the mind and begins karma yoga in Krishna consciousness without attachment, he is by far superior. Papa, instead of becoming a pseudo transcendentalist for the sake of a wanton living and sense enjoyment, it is far better to remain in one's own business and execute the purpose of life which is to get free from the material bondage and enter into the kingdom of God. The uh, prime swartha, swart, swarthagati or goal of self-interest is to reach Vishnu. The whole instruction of Varna and ash, uh, uh, Ashrama is designed to help us reach this goal of life. A householder can also reach this destination by regular service in Krishna consciousness. For self-realization, one can live a controlled life as described in the Sastras and continue carrying out his business without attachment and in that way make progress. A sincere person who follows this method is far better situated than the false pretender who adopts show bottles spiritualism to cheat the innocent public. A sincere sweeper in the street is far better than the charlatan meditator who meditates only for the sake of making a living. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. So this is also a very nice uh, sloka, right? On the other hand, if a sincere person tries to control the active sense by mind and begins karma yoga. So what Krishna is saying is you do karma yoga. What is karma yoga? Perform your duty without attachment. That's all. There is no other uh, further definition at all. Swartha gati. You should understand what is the goal of life and then perform this act. Right? So um, um, this also has got the story of that uh, that cobbler and the the pujari. You know the story? Does somebody know the story? Yes or no? Cobbler and the pujari. Yes, no. You just say yes, no, then I will tell. <laughs> yes, no? yes. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So the, you know the story, yeah. So there was a cobbler and there was uh, this pujari. So one day, Narad Muni, I was uh, asking the Lord as to how to figure out who is the real devotee and Narad Muni and the Lord told him that uh, <clears throat> I can tell you that you can go to Dharti Loka and there is this fun, you know, um, there is this Pujari and there is a cobbler. You give them a message um, from me and then you see, you know, which one of them accepts it. So <clears throat> is that the same story probably? Yeah, yeah, good, good. So, Narayan, Nath Muni then comes and visits um, the Pujari and the Pujari is uh, pay, pay, pays his obediences to Narad Muni and says, how are you and how is the Lord and does the Lord think of me and when will I go to, when will I get to see the Lord? And Narad Muni says, yeah, I'll, I will ask the Lord when I see him. So then he also goes to the cobbler. The cobbler also pays his obeisances to Narad Muni and Narad Muni and he pays respect and he asks him that how is the Lord and you know when will I see the Lord so he says yes soon you you know I will ask this question to, to the Lord when I see him so then he goes back to the Lord and then he's asking Narad Muni asks this question from the Lord saying that these two devotees I met and they were asking that when will they see you? So Lord tells uh, Narad Muni that when you go back to him, you tell the Pujari that you know he will see me in 100 lifetimes. When you see the cobbler, you tell him that he will see me after this lifetime. So then Narad Muni gets confused and he's asking the Lord saying, why, you know, why that Pujari is doing a very nice puja for you? He's like a Brahman. And then he only gets to see you after 100 lifetimes. But whereas the cobbler, who is a Shudra, he gets to see you in, after this lifetime. How is that? So then the Lord says that <clears throat> you will have to go back to understand this better. So you go back and you, when they ask you that what was the Lord doing, you know, and then you tell him that the Lord was putting an elephant through the needle, through the hole of the needle, 
So Narad Muni goes back to the earth and then he sees the sees the Pujari first. And the Pujari says, How is the Lord? And <clears throat> when can I see him? So he says, Yeah, the Lord gave the message for you, and he said that you will be able to see him after only after 100 lifetimes. And then the Pujari says, How is that possible? You know, I am worshipping him every day and I'm just a big devotee. But I don't believe this. So you tell me if you have seen the Lord, then what was the Lord, what was Lord doing? And he said, Lord was actually putting an elephant through the hole of the needle. And the Pujari says, this is not possible. This is impossible. You know, this is not even possible. So you are lying and stuff like that. So then Narad Muni goes away. He goes to the cobbler. Gobbler <clears throat> also pays respect. Asked the question that did you see the Lord and did you ask this question? He said, yes, I asked the question. And the Lord says that you will be able to see him after this lifetime. And the cobbler gets very happy and he says that, tell me what was my Lord doing? And he said the Lord was actually putting an elephant through the needle. And the cobbler says, oh, wow, oh, that's great, you know, this is what the Lord can do. And then Narad Muni is asking the cobbler that, do you believe this? That he is actually doing it. And the cobbler says, yes, I believe it because he is supreme Lord and he can do anything. And that is when Narad Muni understands that the difference between the cobbler and the pujari was really one who had come, cobbler who had complete faith in the Lord, while the pujari did not have complete faith in the Lord. Sorry, Prabhuji, I actually. Thank you. No, 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 bro. <laughs> Thank you. So this story is more, uh, more, more from a faith perspective, but also from a. Um, from a performance karma yoga also. So both of them were performing their activities. That Brahm, that Brahmana or the priest was performing his uh, seva for many, many years. But what is that he was performing is just to, just kind of without belief, without kind of thing. But this cobbler, even though he was just performing in many kind of a, uh, menial work and this one, but he had complete faith. He had, he had no attachment at all. So he was just performing his karma. He had full faith in the Lord. And then he was just dedicating his entire life for that. That's all. So that is where the karma yoga is very specifically need to be understood. So we see in this world many of them like that. No, our our own uh, nice friends or our own relatives, they will be just performing their duty, and then just act according to this one. But is that enough? Is that sufficient, or is there anything beyond that? So that is where we need to bringing the difference between karma yoga and karma yoga with uh, without attachment and. Giving that, uh, giving that fall to the, the Lord. Okay, so that is where one step ahead of Karma Yoga is what we have to see. Okay, let's go. Okay. Next look. Thank you, Prabhu. Niyatam Guru Karma Tvam Karma Jnayo Hya Karma Naha Sharira Yatra Pichate Na prasidhyeda karmanaha. Perform your prescribed duty, for action is better than inaction. A man cannot even maintain his physical body without work. Okay, no, the fine message. I think we can. It, the answer is the the, the, the the translation is very clear. Perform your prescribed duty. Okay, not like any kind of this one. Okay, niyatam kuru karmatam karma jayu akarmanaha. Sharira yatra piche na prasidhya akarmana. So, Sairam, just for the maintenance of your physical body, at least you have to work. Okay. So, per, just perform your duty just to maintain your body, at least. So, what Prabhupada is always saying is you don't have to shrama yevi kevala. Like, you don't have to endure too much that, you know, I'm not able to do chanting, I'm not able to do. Like, you do your work, you do this one just for uh, maintaining your body. At the same time, performing all your acts for the pleasure of the Lord. So in that way, you balance your uh, normal life with the spiritual life. So that everything is in the, in the way. It's like I will, somebody will say, I, I have so much of work that I'm not able to get. A, yes, it will be there. But no, you don't have to endeavor too much of this one. Yes, to, to a certain extent, whatever endeavor is required, we have to do just to maintain the body, just to maintain the family situation, everything. But the desires is has to be controlled so that, you know, we become santushta, we become self-satisfied, become satisfied with whatever Krishna is giving. That way we are being able to uh, balance and then get going. Okay, so at least for uh, sharira yatra picha, so just for maintaining this particular body at least, 
you have to so what proper saying after all one has to maintain one's body and soul together by some work work should not be capriciously without purification of material properties anyone who is in material world is certainly possessed of impure propensity to for lording it over material nature okay so we have to ensure that we don't do any capricious work just to ensure that no i am the owner i am the ejaman i am the uh, ishwara everything just to perform the work and then it has to be done okay so without doing so prescribed duty one should never attempt become so called transly renouncing work and living at the cost of others so there are there are this this is again the pseudo sanyasis also no just like that they will just leave the house and they'll just go and live in an ashram or do uh, sanyas this one and they are completely different. one way in the sense like you no know, they become burden so prabhupada also making it very clear even the brahmachari sanyasis they shouldn't become burden to the society they should serve the society so that society also takes care of them very nicely prabhupada made that uh, point the varnashrama daivi varnashrama dharma like you know the the brahmacharis and sanyasis also perform certain activities for the welfare of the law, of the society okay so that there is a balance there is a give and take and then the, the society is fully established right so then nowadays you will see you know a lot of this uh, uh the so called uh, yogis uh, munis rishi sanyasis and all just trying to go here and there they just beg for food and they just uh, while away their time and then that's it they'll have some uh, saffron cloths uh, they'll be go roaming around the temples here and there and then just live as it is completely completely depend on us and then that is what it is just a burden to the society there is nothing really happening and they will sometimes become old and then they will show off like with all their uh, uh, and the way they they act and all and then they just follow so that is where the burden to the society has to be clearly understood from our side also we need to be very clear uh, when we see all these kind of uh, so called uh, renunciates or the sanyasis now so we need to be very clear in serving them okay let's go so now he is making it very clear so you have to perform work but what is that work that work has to be done as a yagya yeah, that work has to be done as a sacrifice so whatever that we do has to be kind of an sacrifice yagya artha karma no antraha loko yam karma bandhanah tadartham karma kaunteya mukta sanga samacharah so you have to do your duty very perfectly you cannot simply say i have tried this and all you try to do your level best first point second point yagya artha karma no antraha loko yam karma bandhanah so if you want to come out of this bondage what is the solution making it very clear yad hartam karma gontayam mukta sanga samacharah so yagya arthat that is the solution for karma yoga what is that perform your duty but what is that perform your duty as a sacrifice as an yagya which means you have to offer it. which means you have to offer it to yagya yagya purusha who is the yagya purusha he is vishnu okay so yagya arthat karma no antraha lokoyam karma bandhan otherwise it will create bondage what is that bondage the bondage is what is the bondage the fruits of the labor and attachment to so what is the bondage so what will happen you'll get registered in the mind so no 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 or we will have attachment in the no no what causes bond <clears throat> what is my bandha we, we will continue to take birth again Uh, correct that's all so <clears throat> bondage means again and again we are we are bounded in this material world we are we are completely in the janma mrityu jaradvari cycle so whether you do good or you do bad we are always in this world if you do good karma we will get into a better position better office better intelligence better life next uh, brahmana life or kshatriya life whatever be it king's life whatever be it if you do a bad karma then you are into a lower life so whatever be it it will create a bondage either good or bad so we need to ensure that we always come out of that bondage okay so that is the, so karma yoga solution is what to perform it, the yoga or the karma as a sacrifice okay so in this way krishna is pro- prabhu ji your voice not coming brothers now now we can hear okay what, what about others i'm not sure others okay now okay prabhu actually he dropped the minutes prabhu yeah sorry prabhu ramana prabhu we lost you for a few minutes just one minute prabhu oh, we okay. lost you okay now what i was saying is 
Krishna is progressively uh, giving that knowledge, giving that understanding of what is meant by karma yoga. Perform your duty first. Second, perform your duty. You cannot, you cannot escape from your duty. Second, he said, do your duty without attachment. Third, he is saying, do your duty without attachment, but at the same time, give out the uh, uh, give work as sacrifice, which means you work not for yourself, you work for Vishnu, which means you offer everything to the Supreme Lord. Okay, because it will create bondage. So if you want to come out of this world, then you perform your duties for his satisfaction, and then you will be remaining free. Mukta Sangha Samajra, you'll be you'll be perfectly coming out of it. So that yajna means what? Yajna hi, yajna vai Vishnu. So everywhere it is said, Sarvam Krishna Paramastu. Whatever action that you perform, no? everything has to align with Vishnu. Yajna Murti. So what Prabhupada is saying, this practice will not only save one from reaction of work, but also gradually elevate to loving service. So here, Krishna, Prabhupada is, Krishna is not talking about uh, Bhakti Yoga or not about performing uh, love and affection, loving service. No. Just do your duty. Or if you are not able to do your duty, just to try to do perform your activity without attachment. If you are not able to do attachment, at least give it out the results to Krishna Murti. Then at least you will be freeing from the body. So that because 99% of this entire material world's goal is to mukti, right? We mukta. We have to come out of this material world, liberation. So for majority of the people, what is the solution? Perform karma yoga and then offer it as a sacrifice, right? So that is where everybody in the whole world, when they say publicize Bhagavad Gita, or say perform your duty, uh, don't get attached, offer it to the Lord, which means what? That will give the that will give a, a result of liberation or mukti. Okay, but what Prabhupada is making here, that is just a normal level. After that, there is something called as do your duty, performance of uh, without attachment for Vishnu, but what with love and affection. Right? So that is where the, the bhakti portion is getting attached. Okay, transcendental loving service. So, so here it is not transcendental loving service, it is just performance of karma. Okay, next. So what did Krishna do? Krishna, what he created? He created this entire material world. He ensured that everything is in place so that the, the devatas, whomsoever, the suppliers of whatever uh, required for the uh, material world to uh, to exist. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. In between, it gets... Somebody is... Mine? Okay, now is it clear? Yes. Okay. Let's continue. Okay. So, what is this? Sa yajna praja srishtva purvacha prajapati hi aninaiva prasiddhyadvam esho vavat srik ishta kamaduk. Okay. Ishta kamaduk means, what is that? In the beginning of the creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and devatas along with sacrifice of Vishnu and blessed be thou happy by this yajna because its performance will bestow upon everything desirable for ha living happily and achieving liberation. So what did Krishna, what did the Lord do? Saha yajna praja srishtva. So creating purva uvacha. Pragyapati, sorry, prajapati anenaya prasiddhatam. So he created this material manifestation. He created this entire universe. Just making sure that that particular uh, uh, Jeevatmas are happy. How to make the Jeevatmas happy? Just by creating all the facilities, he appointed all these uh, Devatas or the, uh, or the in charges of each and everything. And then you do your duty, you perform, you, uh, you, you uh, give it as an offering to them and then they will be happy and then they will give you back. So it is like kind of a mutual uh, cooperative way of um, give and take and then they are. So that is what the initial uh, setup. Okay, but what is that setup is do so that at least that particular uh, jivatma is focused on whatever they are trying to do, um, not just for their own sense gratification, become greedy and then jealousy, but at least as a as a matter of sacrifice, as a matter of activity that they perform doing yajna and tapasya and uh, dhana, so that they will be slowly able to get. Okay, so this is at a very primary level what 
Krishna is trying to give us uh, as a as a common uh, solution to all the jivatmas. Okay. So when somebody is asking whether Krishna recommends karma yoga, yes, Krishna definitely recommends karma yoga, but uh, to to that particular level of intelligence, to that particular person who wants to uh, just follow certain procedures and get certain benefits, yes, it is available. Okay, so that is why Bhagavad Gita is kind of a encompassing for everybody. Uh, in their own way, in their own level of knowledge and intelligence, and their own way of what is their need. If Bhagavad Gita is for um, a big uh, supreme uh, devotee, yes, it is there. Or, or, or a beginner of in his normal karma yoga, it is there. Yes, it is there. Solution is always there in Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Okay, this nice sloka from Bhagavatam, Shriyapati, Yajyapati, Prajapati, Dhyampati. This uh, the Prajapati or Yajyapati, Dhyampati, Lokapati, Dharapati, Patir Ghatish, Chandraka, Vrishni Satvatpam, Prasidatpam, Bhagavan, Satampati. So he is the Patir, he is the, he is the, uh, the, the proprietor or the caretaker or he is the owner, whatever we say, he is taking care of everything. Okay, Shriyapati, Yajyapati, Prajapati, Dhyampati, Lokapati, Dharapati. So everything encompassed there. So whatever that we are trying to do, is all for that particular patim. Okay. So that is why patim vishvesha atma ishwaram. Okay. So that is where we need to understand. So what what the Lord did is created all these material nature facilities so that we can get into. Okay. So Prabhupada is also in this uh, slow in this sloka purpose. He is making it very nice. So Krishna's message is very nice. You do this sacrifice, be happy. What Prabhupada's message? What sacrifice you are supposed to do? It is not about all this uh, uh, all, all this uh, dravya yajna. Your yajna should be focusing on sankirtana yajna. Okay. So Prabhupada, from the beginning, he is making it nicely. He is not like all kind of other persons like uh, glorifying one particular thing and then finally coming to bhakti. No, no. From the beginning, Prabhupada is making it very nicely. Which is the topmost? Bhakti is the topmost. Krishna consciousness is topmost. Sankirtana yajna is topmost. So in that way, he is making it very nicely. Okay, so this is the mood and mission of Prabhupada. So everywhere we see, uh, from the sloka perspective, Krishna is giving one message. From the purpose perspective, Prabhupada is giving another very nice message. Okay. So Prabhupada is recommending Krishna. This sloka also Bhagavatam sloka. Sangopanga Astarpasam. Yajnai Sankirtana Prajari Yajanti Sumerasaha. So for an intelligent person, one who has sufficient intelligence, Sumera Saha, they will definitely work to do Sankirtana Yajna. That is more um, easy, beneficial, without any kind of a fault, we can always try to improve. Okay. Somewhere this internet is getting disconnected. Are you able to see the screen now? No. No problem. Just yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere I don't know. It is taking the screen. Okay. Let's go. You are able to follow? Yes. Yes, problem. Okay. Hmm. So this is a sequential way of understanding. If you, if you go through the sloka, then you will easily understand. Okay, yeah. Somebody want to read the sloka, please. Okay, please read the translation. Devan bhavya tenena, te deva bhava yantuvaha, parasparam bhava yantaha shreya param avapsyata. The demigods being pleased by sacrifices will also please you, and thus by cooperation between men and demigods, Prosperity will reign. So, very nicely. Devan bhavyata anena te devaha bhavyantu va parasparam bhavyantaha. So, parasparam, parasparam means we all know, no? mutually, like reciprocal. So, you do this activity, you perform a sacrifice, you get this. So, for example, you want to get rain, you will get this. If you want to get uh, uh, particular prosperity, you want to do, uh, uh, you want to get more wealth, you perform Lakshmi Puja. If you want to get more and more wealth, you do specifically Kubera Puja. Nowadays, all kind of new, new, new pujas have come up, right? So all kind of that pujas and yajnas and then if you want to get uh, good uh, progeny, you do putra kamishti yajna. If you want to do um, uh, like <laughs> get kind of new house and you want to grow pressure, you do a vignamina. You do a lot kind of specific yajnas and sacrifices and then homams and havans so that 
that particular devata is pleased and then with the devata he also gives back whatever we are asking okay so in that what we are doing we are performing the yagya but we are already sacrificing to that particular person okay so prabhupada is making it very nicely the demigods or the devatas are the empowered administrators of the material world they supply air water all the panchabhutas everything okay but finally prabhupada is also making it very nicely krishna is the actual benefactor he bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhrutam sarva bhutanam so he will come in the next uh, next sections he will make it like that. now but here in the third chapter uh, for a gradual uh, primary level he is making this point that do this activity activity for the sake of all the devatas then you get the benefit so at least do karma yoga that level he is making no? but this is also very nice the performance of yagya has many side benefits ultimately leading to liberation okay so is krishna recommending uh, uh, recommending karma yoga yes he is recommending at least you start doing all this as an yagya so that slowly you will be uh, moving from a material platform to a transcendental platform and then gradually not getting too much attached to it and then you will get definitely get into liberation okay ahar shuddha satva suddhi satva suddha dhruva smriti smriti labde sarva granthi na vipra moksha so slowly if you are if you are able to um, do ahar shuddhi ahar shuddhi means the eating that food that you take is more of a prashadam and then you offer it to the lord and then and then uh, slowly your existence is purified your 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 place everything is getting purified smriti labdhva your mind will be completely clear i mean what sanctified or cleared and mind is cleared and then you can think about it so that is why very importantly the the the, the taking of prasadam is very important right so that is also um, very important okay uh, one of the stories we will understand when we comes to this uh, uh, in the 14th and 13th chapter there is a nice story about what is the effect of taking uh, prasadam that also i think one day we will there is a there are two three stories related to that i will i will touch upon that okay so this this previous sloka is what you offer it to the this one uh, to devatas and mutually you be uh, supportive you get benefit right so that is what he mentioned this sloka this tall sloka is if you don't do to them what is the what is happening okay so this also ishtan bohan hi deva dashayante yagya bavitah tayr datta na pramedhaagyo yo bhunte stena evacha so he is making it straight forward in charge of various necessity of life the devatas become satisfied the performance of yagya will supply all necessity is making it very clear they will definitely get, okay dashayante yagya bhavitah so whatever the sacrifices that you do whatever activity that you do and offer it to them they will be happy and then they'll give you but at the same time okay apradhaya ebihi bhunte stena eva so if you don't do that what is that you are considered as what stena stena means a thief okay so this is also very important so you do something and you just uh, want to enjoy everything by yourself See, the facilities all being provided by somebody and if you don't give a, uh, a thankfulness or a giving a, a giving back to this one then it is nothing but a complete greediness or complete uh, sense gratification and and who are you you are nothing but a thief okay so this is what krishna is making it very nicely somebody who is not even offering leave out offering to krishna leave out offering to this one at least whatever activity that you do you just offer it to the devatas so that they will be please and they will return it to you but if you don't do you are called a bunte stena stena means a thief okay so that is also very nice so prabhupada is making this for example the meat eaters of recommended to worship kali the god so sometimes they will say in the mode of ignorance or mode of completely in a passion they will do this um, uh, yagya and then all kind of uh, sacrifices but most importantly whatever that they do they have to perform in that particular act that particular mood so that at least they will slowly gradually uh, improve okay so even in even nowadays also if you go to kali if you go to this uh, bengal no they'll they'll perform this all this again. even in uh, south india also this but still nowadays in in those days at least they had some kind of a gratitude towards that particular devata nowadays they just do it for the performance of their own sense gratification which doesn't have any kind of a benefit okay so that is what is point and then 
Prabhupada is making great. Whatever we do in the mode of goodness, in the transcendental worship of Vishnu is recommended. But all the Ajnas are meant for transcendental promotion. So we'll talk about Pancha Maha Yajna. Okay, in the in the next uh, in the fourth chapter, we will talk about Pancha Maha Yajna, Dravya Yajna, uh, and then um, uh, like Sankita. There are main some five main Yajnas that is being prescribed in the fourth chapter. I will I will cover that Pancha Maha Yajna in the coming chapter. Okay. So Prabhupada is talking about eating. Eating is also very important, and then uh, he's talking about the Pancha Bhutas, like what is required for us. Either the the, uh, the sunlight, the heat, the winter water. So whatever be the panchabhutas, everything together we need to ensure it is in a balanced way, and then we opt it. Okay. So Prabhupada is giving about raw material, like you know, all kind of chemicals, raw materials which is required for the uh, for for creating something. So similarly, for us to keep ourselves fit and healthy, we need to purpose of realization is to get into that particular thing, liberation from material struggle and distance. Okay, that is the that is the that is the goal of the Yajna. Okay. Only thing is we forget the human uh, purpose of human life and then we simply take everything. We are nothing but thieves. So there is no aim of life and then we just that is called gross materialistic thieves. Okay, sakama. Sakama means I'll do my activity, but for me for what? Sakama, my my own sense gratification. So that is more from a uh, what is a thief mentality. So this is again continuation of that same sloka. <laughs> you don't offer it to them, but if you don't, if you if you just take it, it is, it is completely thief. Now the next level he is going. He is going to the next level. What is that next level? You are not only thief. What will happen? Yajna sista santo muchyante sarva kibishi bhunjate deva agamam agamam papa ye pachant pachanti atma karanat. Atma karana, it is only for sense enjoyment. If you do what you will get, boom jate teva agamam papa. You will get definitely get sin. Okay. So in two ways we can yajna sishta sina shantaha muchante sarva kilbishehi. So if somebody is performing all kind of yajna and sacrifices, everything, but uh, they offer it to the Lord and they and then they eat, what will happen? The the um, the sins or the papam of that will be completely taken care. But if you don't do it, what will happen? It is if you do it for your own sense gratification. What is it? If they are eating what? They are agamam papam. Very very important. Okay. So this also is very important. This maybe I'll tell you that there, you know the story where that one particular um, one rishi will go to the kingdom and he will try to have food and then you know the story. Anybody knows the story? You want to know the story? Yes. Yes, so yes, there will be one. Uh, I'll make it very short, but uh, you can. So there will be one Rishi, very nice, very pious person. He'll be in the forest. He'll be performing his duty of tapasya and then giving guidance. And he will take some normal fruits, roots, whatever is there in the forest. He'll be having. Uh, so one day, one king will go on the on his jungle uh, hunting or whatever. He saw the Rishi will be very happy. So he will invite him to his kingdom. And then he'll say, please come. Uh, uh, always serving rishis and uh, sannyasis is uh, is very good, auspicious. And anybody coming into the kingdom like your person. But the rishi will say, no, no, I'm very happy here. I'm always santushta. I'm, I'm fine here. I don't want to. But this king will say, no, no, please come one day and then you please go. Right? So then the rishi will say, okay, I'll come uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, something like that. So the next day, the rishi will, the muni will go to the kingdom and then elaborate arrangement, like you know, super duper arrangement. He'll be, uh, he'll be welcomed with so many uh, paraphilia, everything, golden plate, golden spoon, uh, gold cup, and then all, all kind of um, food weight varieties in the South Indian, North Indian, continental, whatever, everything. Uh, so all kind of Raja Upacharam, they call this Raja Upacharam, everything. And then this uh, so Rishi also will, will take, he will not worry about it. He will just take everything. He'll come back, he'll, he'll give his blessings. And all the, uh, the, what do you say, the king, his ministers, wife, children, everybody will be happy. This uh, Rishi will come back home. But the moment he comes back in the in his ashram, he will feel something is not good in his stomach. He will feel like his food is not that food. Whatever he take he took was not digesting. He was always feeling why something is not good in my stomach. I don't know. And then he will just vomit it out. He will just spit it out. And then after that he will feel like very relieved. 
uh, i'm i'm kind of feeling really because this food is not uh, i'm not able to is not palatable into my into my stomach actually but when he was trying to do that just that that when he was trying to do pass out then he noticed that there is a there is a gold spoon or a or a cup that was in his dhoti and he was he will be completely shocked where does this, this spoon come into my body or into my uh, angavastram or my whatever cloth he will be completely shocked i didn't i didn't know that it is with me also so there will be one spoon within is attached to his this one he will be shocked and then he will try to contemplate he will not be able to see did i take it or how did it come no, he will be completely this one so the next day morning what he will do immediately he will go to the kingdom and then he will just call the king the king also will say please come what is that you know then the king this this rishi or muni will say i did a, i don't know i did i want to convey something what is that you want to convey see somehow other this gold spoon came into my my possession i don't know how it came this king also will be taken aback oh what is this did the rishi steal this spoon or he is trying to come back and say i'm sorry or what is it but in a way he will say it's okay it's only one gold spoon that's okay you can you can take it or you can just leave it and go that's fine but the rishi will say no 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 i cannot just like that this one something would have really happened uh, i want to really uh, i want to really examine then india yeah, please come into so we we'll go to the palace and then he will call everybody then he will say what is that you want to you know can you call everybody i want to see everybody so he will call all the cook he will assemble everybody who did serve and all then this uh, rishi or muni will try to see what have, what had really happened so all of them will be there and then he will enquire about them and all of them will be very looking very sincere and then devoted nobody will be kind of any this one then he will still be confused then he will say can you call uh, the persons who brought the ingredients like the sabji the vegetables the rice and all then that that persons also will come and then they will verify everything okay and then finally that fellow will say where did you uh, he will ask where did you get the rice so one person will say yeah yeah we brought the rice from the rice granary or somewhere there in the granary then he will go to the rice granary there will be a lot of rice bags and all here and there so finally this person will ask Uh, where did this uh, yesterday's rice where did you take and then he said he will show one rice bag and then finally after a lot of root cause analysis then he will say this rice actually was stolen rice yesterday we caught one thief uh, and then that thief was trying to uh, take this um, rice bag we caught him so we didn't know from where he got this rice so we just uh, deposited this rice into our rice grain then the rishi will conclude okay this is a stolen rice which means this is another another property and uh, and the kingdom also doesn't know that they have just uh, made this uh, this one so then the rishi will conclude just by eating one day uh, of a stolen property he has got the mentality of stealing okay just imagine okay because he is a great tapasvi tapasvi and this one he was able to uh, immediately get to that particular uh, level of understanding okay then he will say see because of one day uh, of uh, because of the stolen rice i got this mentality and i was able to come out of it because i vomited it out so then he will conclude and say please ensure that whatever you uh, this one you ensure that it is not stolen it is not this one you offer uh, offer it as sacrifice to the lord otherwise i'll get pop so prabhupad will tell the story and say how many times we eat out how many times we eat this and all we don't know who's cooking what kind of mentality that particular person has and what kind of where it is being stolen or what is that particular ingredient nothing so prabhupad in the 13th and 18th chapter will say for a performance five main things are there who is the person who is doing it and who is supporting it and what is the act there are five main things okay so we'll discuss that later but main thing is wherever we go somewhere or other we will be definitely affected if we don't offer the food okay because the food ahara shuddhi uh, in the previous shloka we saw the ahara that we take will only uh, trigger or enable our senses our mind our intelligence so if it is more of all kind of bad qualities or uh, more of passionate things then that fo- that food also will have the particular qualities and properties vasanas it's called and then it will affect our mind so that is why Uh, for example in a way how many of us will say my mother's food is very good my mother's food nobody can beat why 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 she she act consciously cook the food by thinking what is meant by consciously cooking food like uh, while cooking she thinks that this food should be good and uh, the children must get good energy correct, correct. correct correct so in a way mother's food is always good because she loves with she does it with love and affection 
So the food has got that love and affection into that food and then that also comes to us. So irrespective of the taste, irrespective of karam, irrespective of whatever uh, namkeen, whatever be it, irrespective of the spices or salty, sweet, what is more important is all about the love and affection that is being brought to that food. Okay. So that is what carries us, that is what gives us nourishment, that is what gives us away from the pop. Okay. So why this particular set of shlokas, Prabhupada is also emphasizing, Krishna is also emphasizing his thing is, uh, the, the Ahara portion is very, very important. This is covered in 14th chapter also. But in 13th chapter, it is, it is making it very in, uh, clear because karma, influence of karma is, has got a very dependency on the Ahara should be, the Aharam that we take. For example, you go to hotel, you take, so for example, that the hotel person is, is having bad mood, he has got a fight with his family, wife and all. What will happen? The influence of that particular bad action will be on the food also. Okay. Sometimes also Monday morning when the wife cooks with a lot of little more salt to the which means what? There might have been some fight or something like that. Okay. So that is automatically reflect in the food. Right. So that also happens. So that is why Prabhupada is also uh, giving that portion and Krishna is also making it very nicely. You offer it to the Lord so that offering to the Lord has got a lot of benefits. It will, it will not only remove us from the sin, it will become it will become mercy. The Krishna's blessings, the Lord's blessings will come and as well as we will be able to come out of this material world. Okay, So Prasadam has got many benefits. Only Not only removing from the sin, but also mercy of the Lord and also moving away us from this material bondage. Okay? So next slide. Yeah, read this sloka. This is a very nice sloka. Read. Hare Krishna, Rumi. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Anad bhavanti bhutani paryanyat an sambhavaha yagnat bhavanti paryanyo yagnaha karma samud bhavaha Translation, all living bodies subsets, subsist of food grains, which are produced from rains. Rains are produced by performance of yajna sacrifice, and yajna is born of prescribed duties. You can read this purport later, but um, very nice purport. Uh, Prabhupada is giving this very detailed purport, but uh, the understanding of this yajna performance of yajna, it's called as food cycle, okay? Like typically we might have read, uh, we'll go through these slokas. Most importantly, what is happening is, the living and seeds, it is the, 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 the food grains or the, the seeds that come out of the, of the soil will produce, uh, are produced from the rains. So rains, rains are produced by yajna and yajna are preserved by the karmas. It's a kind of a cycle. I will just, I don't know, I have given the, I I had that, yeah. This is uh, this the five yajna, tapo yajna, yoga yajna, swadhyaya yajna, and drabi yajna. I had that. Wait, uh, wait, wait. Okay. There is a cycle. I will just try to show that cycle. So, whatever devatas that they uh, sacrifice, they will be happy. Okay. Yeah. So I will try to create, or you can also create that cycle. It's a very simple cycle. So what is that cycle? The cycle is all about performance of duty, number one. If you perform as a duty and then give it as yajna, and then uh, if, when the yajna is uh, completely sat, uh, done and satisfied, then rain will come, number two. And the rain will carry the the, uh, the, the seeds or the, or the souls. And then once it falls into the ground, immediately the seeds, the seeds sprout and then you get the grains. Okay. So, because the grains are coming, the living entities partake or eat those grains and then they perform again karma. So, in a way, in a way, what is it? It all depends upon that living entity. Nowadays, if there is no rain, why? Because we are not performing our duty perfectly. If we perform our duty perfectly and do yajna, then rain will come. And and with the yajna, the rain will come. And in the rain, all the uh, nourishment, the seeds, everything will come, and then the the seeds will grow. The the uh, the plantation or vegetation will come, 
and with the vegetation what happens a lot of good uh, uh, grains will come and then that is again taken by the jivatma so in a way it all depends upon that cycle of food cycle where the jivatma performing his duty perfectly so performance of duty by the jivatma duty performed as an yagya yagya will give sun uh, will get uh, rain rain will carry the grains and grains is taken by taken as food by the jivatma so in a circle then the jivatma will perform sacred uh, as uh, actions yagya yagya to uh, rain rain to grain grain to jivatma clear if in the next class if you can somebody can just i had that uh, cycle i just search somebody if somebody can put that cycle uh, a cycle of this and then share it to everybody also okay. proper is talking about balde vidya pushans uh, that that cycle same same thing yagyam sarvesham uh, sarveshwaram vishnu vyacharah tashyetam ashtanti tena tad dehat okay shloka is also very very annad bhavati bhutani annad means what food okay bhavanti bhutani this jivatma parjanyat anna sambhava yagyat bhavati parjanyo yagya karma samudbhava so in a way annad bhavanti bhutani one section parjanyat anna sambhava yagyat bhavati parjanyo yagya karma samudbhava the cycle okay samudbhava means how does that particular uh, yagya will come is based on performance of prescribed duties for example right from the uh, child is born there are specific specific upachara specific um, uh, sacrifices and and uh, activities that somebody has to perform right so the, all those things is also part of this activity so that is where that is where we always say you cannot escape from a duty you cannot escape from i will not do perform this yagya you have to perform those specific so dharma or the karma kosha So there is a there is a analogy also very important analogy nice analogy when there is an epidemic disease an antiseptic vaccine protects a person from the attacks of such epidemic anyway. similarly food offered to lord vishnu then takes us sufficiently resistant to all the material affection and one who is accustomed to this called as a devotee of the lord so this is a this is an analogy like for example when we are uh, when we are uh, affected by some disease we take an antiseptic so what is it our prashadam is also kind of an antiseptic it will it will resist all our material desires okay for example if you go to um, i i always give this for the aharam i always give this andhra example andhra you go you have lot of varieties of pickle right uh, the most spicy to normal spicy and all but everything together is actually stimulating your mind stimulating your this one and then it actually creating more passion only right so if somebody is able to give up pickle then they are in the right direction okay that is what i will always say Uh, but 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 just like that we say okay give up pickle means that's all so it is it is kind of a bigger uh, point right but whatever that stimulates you more and more is actually uh, more uh, more from a passion perspective or desire perspective we need to be very very okay somebody will say this is one year old uh, pickle this has been there for two years it is being soaked so nicely this mango has been there so nice so all those things nothing but Uh, in the mode of uh, ignorance, we'll we'll see this in, in the in the fourteenth chapter when Krishna recommends what what is good food, what is bad food, what is uh, the worst food. Then, but here, just making it a very nice point that food offered to Lord Vishnu is some kind of an antiseptic that will protect us from the material affliction. So this also very important line. When Lord Krishna is worshipped, the devatas, demigods, who are limbs of the body are also automatically worshipped. Therefore, there is no separate worship need for the devas. For this reason, the devotee of Lord Lord who are in Krishna conscious offer Krishna, offer food to Krishna, and then eat. Okay. That is where the point is. So, Prabhupada is making all these uh, nice, specifically focusing on food, ensuring that particular person uh, is offering to the Lord. Okay. We'll finish. We'll finish till this sloka and then stop. At least we are supposed to do twenty slokas, but it's okay. I think we will. The the way we progress is also okay. We finish ten slokas per per week. Twenty slokas is also kind of okay. 
ओके कर्म ब्रह्मोद्भवम विद्धि ब्रह्माक्षर समुद्भवम तस्मात सर्वगत ब्रह्म नित्यम यज्ञ प्रक्षित प्रिस्क्राइब रेग्युलर ड्यूटीज आर प्रिस्क्राइब इन द वेदास द वेदास आर डायरेक्टली मैनिफेस्टेड फ्रॉम सुप्रीम पर्सन ऑफ डेट कॉन्सिक्वेंटली ऑल परवेडिंग ट्रांसफर इज इटर्निक्स व्हिच मींस सो इफ समबडी इज आस्किंग वेयर इज हाउ डू आई अंडरस्टैंड रेगुलेटिव प्रिंसिपल्स यू आर सेइंग परफॉर्म योर ड्यूटी परफॉर्म योर एक्टिविटीज हाउ डू आई नो वेयर इट इज अवेलेबल हाउ डू आई कर्म ब्रह्म उद्भवम उद्भवम मींस व्हाट वेयर इट इज कमिंग उद्भवम विद द ब्रह्म अक्षर ब्रह्माक्षर समुद्भवम सो इट इज कमिंग डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द vedas brahma so from lord brahma krishna giving vedas to brahma and from brahma to all the rishis lord the rishi sanat kumaras followed by all the sapta rishis and then we get the okay so read through this purport maybe tomorrow next session we can just discuss about what is this specifically uh, prabhupad is making it uh, for us to understand very nice uh, purport okay prabhupad is talking about karma vikarma portion he is talking about the vedas and then what is that after creating the vedas what happens then how that particular jivatma coming into the material world all those things also mentioned but we can you can you can simply understand it is a chance for the conditioned soul to attain liberation therefore the conditioned soul must try to follow the process of yajna by becoming krishna conscious even those who do not follow the vedanjan may adopt principle but it will take place of performance of vedas and yajna so it is very nice like now it is a chance so what is a chance to perform yajna what is a chance to attach towards the lord to get detached from the activities to perform yajna offer into the lord so that at least we will try to get that particular conditioned life away and get into a liberation I think we'll stop here. We'll be tomorrow uh, by Saturday again. We'll continue with the next set of slokas. So today, what we saw is all about this particular portion. Um, from here, we saw from nahi 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 kashtikshana vapi. So the jivatma is always active. You have to perform helplessly. It has to be active. So not even a moment that particular jivatma can be one. Then we saw he cannot be a mitya chara. He must be a do as a fool. we might we might say i i'm not doing but you cannot be a pretender okay i'm not doing i'm not no no i'm not attached to it but internally the all that attachment will be there okay so that is that is much more worst than actually you know just living with it so don't be a mithya chara and then even just for maintain the maintenance of the body one has to perform act perform your duty better better for better action is uh, better than inaction that also is saw and then work done as sacrifice so he says control your mind control your senses work without works without attachment okay then he saying act as sacrifice so when you when you act as sacrifice what is the benefit it, it becomes free from bondage then that is where we 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 create this entire material world is created for all the jivatmas to work very cooperatively closely with all the devatas to perform this yajna and then offer it to the sacrifice to the yajna purusha or the devatas and then automatically the devas will be happy and then they will give you whatever you want but if you don't think then you are eating papam you are eating um, you are staying a bunta you are a thief and then that cycle of this one so anad bhavati bhutani parjanya tanasmah so you you perform your duty you perform yajna yajna will will bring rain and with the rain the food grains will come with the anna or the food grains and then you eat the food you partake the food and then again you offer it to the law, you offer it as yajna and then with the yajna again the cycle of uh, rain and then rain to food so that is a it is anyway you have to perform that particular thing. okay so prabhupad is recommending that performance if yajna is important at the same time uh, offering to the lord is also very important if you don't offer it to the lord it becomes completely sin so in this kali yuga this kali yuga what is more or the best or the easiest is the sankirtana okay so we have five types of i say five types but i'm just uh, here just specifically mentioning tapo yajna performance of uh, uh, sacrificing all comes of comforts of like you are if you're able to wake up early morning regularly and then uh, perform mangala aarti and everything you are doing some kind of a tapasya right 
So that is that is first yoga. Tapas we have to do yoga. Whatever um, uh, physically you are able to do some activities. That is for a yoga. Yeah, swadhyaya means performing uh, or reading Bhagavatam, reading Bhagavad Gita, reading scriptural injunctions. Vedas is also one way of swadhyaya. All the brahmacharis are recommended to perform this swadhyaya. Right, so they will have to perform this swadhyaya. And dravya mayaya is performed by giving out the hard and money. <coughs> this is again prescribed for the for the uh, grihasthas. Like now you do you do some work or you earn from some profit or you do some business, you get a lot of benefit. Dravyam, as material, this one, you give it back. You do some yajna. So in some way or the other, you have to perform yajna. Either through tapasya, like on the rishis or munis, or yoga, or the kind of mystic yoga, the, the great um, ashtanga yoga munis they will do, or through swadhyaya yajna, by performance of reading one or through this one. So in any way, you have to perform. Okay. So I think we'll stop here. Then we will continue on. And I think we'll have to do what is this portion. So we have seen, uh, we have seen Stena Bhunta. This also is very important. This is also Vyajna Sishta, Shantushto, Muchente Sarva Kilipshi, Atma Karana. This also we have seen. Okay. Don't be a thief. Yo Bhunte, Stena Yevacha. Okay. Then the next class we will see tomorrow. Okay. Hare Krishna. Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai Shila Prabhupad ki jai Ananda Koti Vaishnam ki jai. Jai. Hare Krishna Prabhupad. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhupad. Hare Krishna Prabhupad. Hare Krishna We will try to complete at least uh, uh, 10 to 15, not 10 actually, 15 slokas per day so that at least we will are able to complete it. Okay. So we will go, we'll go in this speed itself and then we will try to catch up. Hare Krishna. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, Prabhu. I'm I'm here to upload. Actually, last time also I was in uh, in a different laptop. So it is already there in the cloud. I will download and then upload and then I will I'll share the link. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.